January 5th, 2010, just over 12 years ago as of this video. Google teamed up with HTC to release the Nexus One, the Superphone, the iPhone killer, the first Google phone. This marked the beginning of an era, an era that very few enthusiasts will ever forget. 2010, it was quite the year. Standalone MP3 players were still going strong, people were running around with pocket digital cameras, YouTube looked like this, and they were also slowly starting to remove the 10 and 15 minute time limit for videos. Apple released the first iPad that spring and the iPhone 4 two months later. Both Microsoft and Sony released their answers to the Nintendo Wii with their versions of motion controlled gaming. Sony both retired the Walkman and announced that they would be discontinuing floppy disk production the following year. The MySpace user base fell to its lowest point ever, while Facebook was the most visited website, even over Google. Toy Story 3 was the highest grossing film released that year, Kesha's TikTok was the biggest hit, and yours truly turned 13. Yeah, time really does fly, especially in tech. It was around this time that the smartphone arena was getting packed, and 2009 saw things getting pretty heated, with iPhones and Blackberries seeing significant growth in sales. Phones like the Motorola Droid helped push the needle for the Android space, the HTC HD2 was making some noise, and the Palm Pre was changing the game. But in 2010, it felt like there was a new phone getting released every day as global smartphone sales jumped from 172.3 million to 297 million, accounting for 19% of all mobile phone sales that year. The BlackBerry Pearl 3G, Galaxy S, iPhone 4, HTC Evo 4G, Droid X, BlackBerry Torch, Droid 2, T-Mobile G2, the MyTouch 4G, all released in 2010. On top of that, Microsoft debuted their newly refreshed mobile operating system, Windows Phone 7, that year as well, with LG, Samsung, and especially HTC hopping on that bandwagon early on. But of course, it was the Nexus One that kicked things off. A day prior to release, a video was uploaded to the Google Nexus One YouTube channel officially introducing the new phone titled Nexus One Web Meets Phone, along with a link in the video's description to go buy the phone at google.com slash phone. Yeah, that was where you had to go to buy the phone, fully unlocked, starting at $530 online only. That's around $700 in today's money. Now, buying a phone at full price straight up was nowhere near a normal thing back then. Google did have an offer where you could grab the phone for $180, but with a T-Mobile plan centered around a two-year contract for $80 per month, so that wasn't too great. And we'll get into this a little more in a bit. Either way, the hype surrounding this phone was absolutely insane. It was leaked and rumored non-stop. Nowadays, it's extremely normal to see devices getting rumored and leaked with an excessive amount of hype buildup. So just think about what it must have been like when even the thought of a Google phone began surfacing back then. Now, this introduction video showcased everything possible in under two minutes, basically boasting that the phone could do just about anything but pick up your kids from school and wash the dishes. This was a phone that had it all, inside and out, and it actually shared a lot of the same design language and nearly identical internals as HTC's very own Desire smartphone, which was released a couple months later. So with that, let's take a quick look at the specs and try your best not to laugh. We're looking at a 3.7 inch 800 by 480 AMOLED display with a 54.8% screen to body ratio, 5 by 3 aspect ratio, and 252 pixels per inch. <clears throat> yeah, it came with a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor. Wow. Adreno 200 GPU, half a gigabyte of RAM, a micro SD card slot. Wow. And four gigabytes of internal storage. Wait, wait, there's more. It came with a removable back and a removable 1400 milliamp hour battery, a single five megapixel camera with autofocus and an LED flash. Wow, bro. You could also shoot in 480p at 24 frames per second. Wow, bro. That's great. I'm getting cheap. Up here. It also had these pins at the bottom so that you could use the Nexus One docking station to charge it up. There was Bluetooth 2.1, it charged via micro USB 2.0, and it came with a 3.5mm port up top. Now while we're up here, you'll see that the power button is up here as well. Now this is back when phones were small enough to be able to house these buttons up top, which is incredibly funny to say because back then, the screen size of this phone was considered to be huge, and that is not an exaggeration. I know a lot of the OGs can back me up on that one. If you know, you know. 
Not only was it fun skimming through some of the other videos on this ancient channel, I also had a fun time reading through some of the comments left on this video. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to Dbrand for supporting the channel. They help make these videos possible, so make sure you check them out. They've got a dope case for the new Steam Deck, they've got a new case coming out for the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and they have these plates that'll help make your PS5 look a lot less like a router. That's in addition to all the skins and cases and screen protectors that they have too. Link in the description. No words, just stunning. Google owns the future. One gigahertz processor. Probably this is gonna be a gaming phone. Nice. I simple love this phone. OMG, like for real, I have it and I am so happy I do. Smile. I work for T-Mobile and my customer brought this in today so I played with it and man, I gotta tell you, this phone is sick. I remember getting this when it first came out and broke the screen a week later. Just bought one. It is freaking awesome. Glad I ditched my iPhone. I swear I'm gonna throw my iPhone. Still a better phone than the iPhone 5S. Still a better phone than the iPhone 6S Plus. Still better than the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Don't forget 512 megabytes of RAM for the win. iPhone has less than half. Still better than the iPhone 10s Max. I think Apple could sell this even now if they put Apple logo behind it and call it a revolutionary concept. Just wait until this summer iPhone is going to own all. Android phones will dominate the mobile hardware, even your car's operating system. iPhone OS will be extinct. Guess I can toss my Sony Clie. Wouldn't take this phone if someone gave it to me. G1 is 10 times better. Nothing special in my opinion. iPhone killer? <laughs> yeah, just like the 10 other ones that tried before. Looks like a great phone, but now the masses won't have to think anymore. The, the phone will have all the answers. Think I'm kidding or way out of line, right? Before you react, do this. Go to the food store, shop for 30 minutes, and count the people glued to their cell phones asking others what to buy. Now repeat this test in two years and don't crap your pants when number you counted has tripled the older number and they're talking to a computer. 1984 just came 28 years later, that's all. Wow, nobody needs the internet this much. I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one, bud. Now, I never owned one myself back in the day, and I didn't pick this one up until a couple years ago, but I knew a handful of people that did have one, and it was one heck of a conversation starter. I remember some of the most common things to show off were how thin the phone was. Google really wanted consumers to understand that this was as thin as a number two pencil. People would always show off how the phone could vibrate on each press of the keyboard to give you tactile feedback. You could use the phone as a GPS, you could control the phone with your voice, and you could set a video as your live wallpaper. Oh, and of course, live wallpapers in general. How about a waveform that matches up with music? Or some magic smoke? What about some autumn leaves floating on top of some water? Or grass with a sky that changes in real time based on your time zone? Or maybe a swirling galaxy? Yeah, these are great and all, but none of these come close to being as iconic as the Nexus live wallpaper. How cool is it having a bunch of colorful little squares with glowing trails zoom across the screen, with new ones spawning in with every tap of the display? It doesn't get much better than this. This of course brings me to the software. Now, Android had grown up a lot by this point. The Nexus One launched with pure stock Android 2.1 Eclair and ended its update run with 2.3.6 Gingerbread. There was a lot to like about the user experience. Again, this was stock Android with no additional OEM visual customization or anything. This is how Google wanted consumers to experience Android. Along with those awesome live wallpapers, you also got a nice number of widgets for your home screen. Uh, there was a brand new weather application. You could bring up sort of an overview of your home screen pages, kind of like WebOS. The app drawer had this neat 3D scrolling effect. The lock screen was functional. Multi-touch capabilities were added shortly after launch. And the sleep animation mimicking an old CRT TV was one of the coolest things I had ever seen a phone do. Honestly wish this was still a thing. The gingerbread update also introduced a new keyboard and a new coat of paint for different UI elements. Android was maturing. And of course, there was the three-part method of UI navigation. Touchscreen, capacitive buttons, and a trackball. The capacitive buttons weren't too great. You really had to give them a good press for them to respond. The trackball wasn't really necessary, but it was nice to have as a more precise method of control, and I think its best feature was acting as a notification light. That was cool. It still is, honestly. And I think it really brings together the overall aesthetic of the phone. It was slim and classy looking. It was premium with nice, solid materials, good curvature, which made the phone comfortable to hold. And looking at it now, to me, it's just iconic with some old school and modern elements. Of course, by now, a phone of this size makes the iPhone 13 mini look large. 
Unfortunately, the Nexus 1 didn't sell too well, and it was given the label of a complete flop sales-wise. Again, full price straight up was just not it for people back then. Consumers weren't really trying to do all that, especially without any hands-on time with the device beforehand. Now, as I mentioned before, Google was pushing consumers to their website in order to buy the phone, a phone that was entirely free from any carrier influence. They were aiming to disrupt the industry in that way. It was supposed to be as simple as selecting the phone, selecting a carrier and carrier plan, and then check out. Boom, you're done. This was touted as the first carrier independent smartphone store in the US. But due to a number of reasons, including carriers utilizing different frequencies and other technologies, oh, and the fact that carriers prefer to have influence and control, that plan just didn't work out. Google's site for the Nexus listed the phone as coming soon to Verizon, but around springtime, that got scrapped, and instead, Google said, hey, if you want the Nexus 1 on Verizon, eh, just go get the HTC Droid Incredible which did have very similar specs to the Nexus. They even called it the cousin of the Nexus. It just didn't have stock Android. Sprint also did a 180 on the whole thing after promising Nexus 1 support and set its sights on the HTC Evo. The Nexus could get 3G on T-Mobile, but it was limited to Edge on AT&T. So all of this, as you can imagine, heavily contributed to the phone not selling very well. For reference, Nexus One sales were compared to the likes of the first gen iPhone and the Motorola Droid 74 days after their respective launches. The Nexus One sold around 135,000 units after 74 days, while the iPhone sold 1 million units, and the Droid sold 1.05 million units. Now, depending on how you look at this, you can view these numbers as flop-worthy, or you can look at them as impressive, considering just how limited purchase options were, or both. Now, to make matters worse, it was pretty clear that Google just wasn't ready to be a consumer company. Customer support for the Nexus One was a mess and basically non-existent. You either had to wait for generic responses via email or refer, refer, what, refer? or refer to online forums. And it wasn't like the Nexus One was the only Android game in town either. There were plenty of other options out there. Alas, a little over four months after its release, Google announced that it would stop selling the Nexus One through the web store while simultaneously shutting down the web store and turning it into a spot to check out other Android phones all by the time they would have more units to sell in actual retail shops. This didn't exactly work out either because two months after that, Google stopped selling the device altogether to consumers in the US. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Now this didn't stop Google from giving it another shot because on December 16, 2010, not even a whole year after they launched the Nexus One, Google released the Nexus S in collaboration with Samsung. Now we'll talk about this guy in another video. As rough as things were, this was still the Google phone. Everything has to start somewhere, right? I mean, to get to here, we had to start here. Well, actually, we had to start here, and we'll get into this one another time too. It deserves its own video, but you get the point. Don't get it twisted. The Nexus One was a great phone. It was Google's attempt to make a definitive Android smartphone, and to many, it was. However, it was too difficult and competitive for the masses to agree to that. But it did force higher competition. The Nexus One and the ideas and plans behind it made a big impact and laid out the foundation for what was to come. Every time I see this phone nowadays, I can't help but smile and mess around with it for a few minutes. It's not exactly fully usable anymore, that's no surprise, but it reminds me of it. If it, if it, if it? <laughs> Come on. But it reminds me of a completely different era and what this thing was like back in its prime. It makes me think of humble beginnings and just how far we've come since. I've got a soft spot for it, and I know I'm not the only one. While the phone received its last official update less than two years after it came out, the modding community kept things rolling with good old custom ROMs, making it possible for it to run things like 4.4 KitKat. I wonder what phones are going to be like in another 12 years. If you made it to this point of the video, you are the absolute best. I appreciate you a ton, and drop a potato down in the comments. Hope you enjoyed. It's been Zach, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.